I thank you for stopping by to check out one of my videos. Greatly appreciate it. And today I'm just going to be talking about the new Raspberry Pi 5 that's been announced. As I'm showing on the screen, it looks like you'll be able to get it soon if you've ever used one before. If you haven't, maybe you should take a look and watch the video. I will show some of the things you can build with it and just talk about the new hardware and briefly mention the new operating system. This new Raspberry Pi 5 is used millions, maybe hundreds of millions of times around the world. And the new one is two to three times better or faster and more powerful and has more capabilities. And it will be amazing to see what can be done with it. The price range looks like it'll be 60 to 80 US dollars and it will include a new Pi operating system first party. So those are all really exciting things. Stay tuned to check out the rest of the video. So I wanted to make a quick video about a great new product that looks like it's coming in October 2023, and that is the Raspberry Pi 5. So I pulled up a couple different web pages here from their website to take a quick look at what they're saying about the new product and a little bit of history behind it. So this was released on 928 2023 the day this video should go live. They're going to be releasing the Raspberry Pi 5 at the end of October, priced at $60 for the 4 gigabyte variant and $80 for the 8 gigabyte variant, plus your local taxes. They say pretty much Every aspect of the platform has been upgraded and we'll take a quick look at that. If we go to this other page for a moment, we can see here it has two to three times the speed of the previous generation featuring silicon designed in-house for the best possible experience. They're showing some accessories here for the new Raspberry Pi 5, such as the case. It's a clipped together case with, with a built-in fan. And the new design provides full access to the GPIO pins and allows for case stacking. Also includes a USB-C power supply, the Raspberry Pi Active Cooler. If you're using your Raspberry Pi without a case and it's under heavy load, the active cooler makes sure it runs smoothly while it's working its hardest. So here are some specifications for the new version. They're saying here that you can pre-order it with your favorite resellers, so you can find that link here if you're interested. You'll need the latest version of the Raspberry Pi OS Bookworm for your Raspberry Pi 5. And Bookworm will launch in mid-October for the operating system. And this is a higher performance computer, so it will require the newer power supply. They recommend 5 volts, 5 amps, USB-C power supply with 27 watts. So let's go back to the main page and take a look at a few other things here. So there's a picture of it. And I think a little bit of history is interesting back in June 2020. Here's a little bit of history in June 2019, they launched the Raspberry Pi 4, which was their first true PC class Raspberry Pi computer. It had a quad core ARM Cortex A72 processor clocked at 1.5 gigahertz. And that was 40 times faster than the original Raspberry Pi from 2012. So as they say here, today their effort bears fruit with the launch of the Raspberry Pi 5 compared to the Pi 4. They have between two and three times the CPU and GPU performance 
roughly twice the memory and IO bandwidth and for the first time they have the Raspberry Pi silicon on a flagship Raspberry Pi device. New platform, new chipset. So I'm going to scroll down to a few other points here. Lots of technical information. Looks like they still have composite video generated by RP1 is still available. The Raspberry Pi 5 is built at the Sony UK Technology Center in South Wales. And we already looked at the accessories, a nice case, an active cooler, a good power supply, camera and display cables. Here they say the M.2 hats. One of the most exciting additions to the Raspberry Pi 5 feature set is the single lane PCI Express 2.0 interface intended to support fast peripherals. It is exposed on a 16 pin 0.5 millimeter pitch FPC connector on the left hand side of the board. This will allow users to attach NVMe SSDs and other M2 format accessories. So I think that's really awesome. And looks like they're going to have a new Raspberry Pi beginner's guide available and here They've sourced a Panasonic Lithium rechargeable coin cell with a pre-fitted two pin JST plug, five bucks. And this is important, a new better Raspberry Pi OS. In parallel with the final stages of the Raspberry Pi 5, their software team has been busy developing a new version of the Raspberry Pi OS. The official first party operating system for Raspberry Pi devices. This is based on the most recent release of Debian, codename Bookworm, and incorporates numerous enhancements, notably the transition from X11 to the Wayfire Wayland compositor on Raspberry Pi 4 and 5. The OS will launch in mid October and will be the sole supported first party operating system for the Raspberry Pi 5. Keep checking back here and they will tell you some more news about the OS. You'll be able to download it shortly before the Pi 5 arrives on shelves in late October. And this is pretty interesting here, giving credit. Bringing Raspberry Pi 5 to life has been a seven year, $25 million endeavor involving tens of organizations and hundreds of individuals. And they have a list here who they're thanking. And there's a lot of comments, a lot of excitement about the product. And there's so many things to do with Raspberry Pis. If you've never used them before, you may want to take a look. They're a lot of fun to work with. And again, pretty much limitless different things you can experiment and use them for. And they're used all around the world. And so I pulled up a web page here. At some point in the past, I had put together a Raspberry Pi Kubernetes cluster. So I just typed in in Google search Raspberry Pi Kubernetes cluster and the first link that came up I believe was one of the tutorials that I had followed at that point and so here this shows it's six steps how to build a Raspberry Pi Kubernetes cluster using micro K8s so they show you how to build a lightweight, fast, enterprise-grade Kubernetes, which is pretty fun to play around with and set up like virtual workloads and applications. So I would imagine there'll be new instructions and information coming out on building Kubernetes clusters with the latest version of the Raspberry Pi. Down here at the bottom right it says 44 minutes to go. There are quite a few directions and if you use four of the Raspberry Pis 
you have to do certain things on all of them. So it can take some time. So if you're looking for something to do, maybe you could look at building a Kubernetes cluster or any number of other projects. Just wanted to make a short video and mention about the Raspberry Pi 5 in case you weren't aware that it's coming out soon. I pulled up another web page here, the Raspberry Pi for Home, to point out a few other interesting things about it. There's many different projects you can do if you've never built a Raspberry Pi or used it to build something else. I think you should maybe take a look. They're pretty affordable and you could build a desktop computer. They save a lot of power, save money, save the planet, 15 watts it only uses, which is a fraction of the power of a traditional PC. It has the Raspberry Pi OS, and it's a familiar desktop environment with everything you're used to, like web browsers, word processors, spreadsheet applications, uh, intuitive operating system. If you need to support to navigate the desktop, Raspberry Pi comes with a range of accessibility options like screen readers and magnifiers. It receives regular free updates, ensuring the Raspberry Pi features the latest accessibility options, upgrades, and security patches. And here is a sample of some of the projects. Build your own weather satellite receiving station. Collect data from space. Build a plug and play Raspberry Pi USB webcam. A super slim smart mirror. And if I click on more tutorials, it takes us to another page which shows many other projects. A Raspberry Pi flight tracker. Uh, using a Raspberry Pi in kiosk mode. Building a Raspberry Pi Pico Iron Man arc reactor. Block ads on everyday device in your house or on every device in your house with a Raspberry Pi and Pi hole. Add ambient lighting to your TV with Raspberry Pi. Control 3D printers. Set up a UK train time display. Play retro games on your Raspberry Pi with RetroPie. You can build a network attached storage and a Raspberry Pi cluster, which I mentioned in another part of the video about Kubernetes clusters. And the list goes on and on. It, they're a lot of fun to work with. And I and I'm very happy to see this new version is available. If you like this channel, please like and subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when I post new content.